Jay from Real Street Performance. Today I'll be assembling a Stroker 2JZ engine. The goal with this engine is to make over a thousand horsepower, but have it average very well. So it's gonna be a really nice driving engine that has a thousand plus wheel capability. We're gonna use a 96 millimeter BC crank. It's a lightweight version. We're gonna use a BC H-beam rod, a diamond piston. The cylinder head is a GE head that's been ported by Mazworks, has a BC 276 camshaft, DLC coated buckets from Kelford and Freya valve train. The block work was machined at Mazworks. It's a GE block, but we've converted it to GTE. I won't use the piston squirters on this particular build, but it is handy to have the oil galleys on the exhaust side of the block for turbo feed and or oil pressure sensors. The bottom of the cylinders has been notched to clear the connecting rods. Whenever you increase stroke on an engine or you're using a larger than stock connecting rod, it's always good to check connecting rod to block clearance. Now this engine is gonna be using a stock style oil pump. So I elected to use a piston squirter block off because I'd rather have the oil pressure available for the bearings. Using an alcohol based fuel like ethanol or methanol in a drag race environment, I'm less concerned about the piston cooling jets than I am the oil pressure. I'm using a King coated bearing in this build. Uh, I've mentioned it before in previous videos, but the coating that King is using, it's very high tech for the aftermarket. It's on par with what OEMs are doing and it's helped companies like Cosworth get through some really intense durability testing and they're a really good value. So if you have King coated bearings available for the engine you're building, I'd recommend using them. The 96 millimeter crank from Brian Crower comes in a lightweight version only. So it's a Honda raw journal, but the real magic is seven and a half hours of machine work and additional processes to whittle away material that's not used. So you end up with a lighter crankshaft that's just as strong as the standard weight crank. This engine will have a set of our billet main caps and they'll be held in place by an ARP 625 fastener. The 625 fastener is something we moved to with our janitor race car as we went over the 15 or 1600 horsepower range in the stock block, we started to see some cap walk. So going to a stronger fastener will help mitigate that. One of the things we're really proud of with the real street caps is the amount of time it takes to fit them. Some of the main caps on the market when I was installing them early on in my career with the 2J, there was a lot of time burned up in getting the thrust clearance correct, getting the caps fit in the saddles and not having to deal with excessive amounts of material to achieve a good align bore. So these caps come out of the box with minimal amount of material needed to be removed to fit them. So you're still gonna have to go through the machining process of a line bore to line hone while fitting a real street cap, but it's not nearly as intense as some of the other brands. This is gonna save you time and money. This particular engine belongs to my business partner, Mark Conti, and this will be the second stroker engine that I built for him. And he elected to get a diamond piston. So where I normally reach for a CP or a Manly, he wanted to use the diamonds and it's not a brand that I use on a regular basis, but they were a nice part to use. And they have a lot of good finish work without adding a lot of cost. The pins for this engine are from Trend and it's a through hardened pin that's DLC coated. So basically you end up with a pin that's as strong as a 250 wall pin, but it's only 200,000 sticks. So you're saving some weight. And one of the things you wanna be mindful of while you're adding stroke to an engine is the reciprocating mass. So you're moving the piston and rod further up and down the bore, piston speed goes up, leverage goes up. So you wanna be mindful of the weight of the parts that you're using. Now with this particular stroke combination using a factory length rod, we end up with a 112 compression height. So it's a fairly short piston. So we're gonna use a rail support. It's important when you fit your rail support that that little dot is visible through the pin bore. That allows the rail support to be seated all the way down in the piston, letting the oil ring fit correctly.
Now I'm just gonna go ahead and lubricate the piston skirts and the bores with 30 weight non-detergent motor oil, making sure there's lubrication present during startup. Depending on the bore finish and the ring style, there are guys that will use a thin lubricant like ATF on the bores, but motor oil is kind of a safe bet. It's what it's naturally gonna be there when the engine is running. And if you do run into a problem during startup, like you've left something unplugged and you run into a situation of extended cranking period without oil pressure, it's better to have oil and lubrication in different places than it is to let it be dry. So I'm using a quality assembly lube from HPL and I'm just using a non-detergent motor oil on the bores. If you're installing an OEM head gasket, it's good to look for this tab on the rear exhaust side of the block. This means that you had the head gasket on correctly. If you have that tab flipped over, you're gonna get oil in the coolant. A couple times a year, I'll be contacted from a customer that is experiencing that problem, and I'll always tell them to go look for that tab. So when you're putting the head gasket on the engine, take a look and make sure that that tab is at the exhaust side rear of the block. For those of you with sharp eyes, you'll notice the DLC or diamond light coated buckets. DLC is gaining popularity in the aftermarket and in the OEM engine development. It helps keep surfaces intact if lubrication deteriorates or is displaced. So things like buckets, lifters, wrist pins, things that are splash lubricated do really well with the DLC coating. There are now more than one off the shelf DLC coated bucket option. So if it's something that you're looking at for your build, you no longer have to buy buckets and send them out to be coated. For the camshafts, I'm gonna use a Brian Crower 276. This is my favorite camshaft profile for the 2JZ. If I'm gonna build anywhere from 800 to 2000 horsepower, this is just the camshafts I reach for. For those of you that haven't experienced VVTI on a 2JZ, it's really a helpful tool to have when it comes to balancing power and traction. Because the engine's gonna spool the turbocharger sooner, I'll be able to mitigate the boost level and not have a big boost spike that's gonna knock the tires loose. So 
It works in your favor when it comes to average horsepower. So you're gonna have a car that accelerates harder out of a turn, spools the turbo easier with really no ill effect. And because it's all OEM engineered Toyota parts, there's not really any risk involved. Timing a 2JZ engine is really simple compared to a lot of other engines. And there isn't much to know. You're gonna put the crankshaft at TDC and line the mark on the oil pump up with a mark on the crankshaft reluctor gear. Your exhaust cam is pretty straightforward. There's these two raised peaks in the timing cover up here that you're gonna line them up. Now, where this engine and other VVTI engines differ is the cam sprocket moves. So you can kind of flounder this around through the advanced section of the gear. And there's also multiple marks on it. The mark that you're looking for is the single slot in the cam sprocket. That's gonna line up with this. Ignore this mark and ignore this mark. Those are both dots. And you just want the single slot lined up with the front cover. Another thing that's different on this engine compared to the engines that I normally build is this is an NA cylinder head. So the NA cylinder head has an exhaust port over each cylinder. So the turbo cylinder head, the exhaust ports were kind of moved in and that was in an effort to make room for the twin turbo kit because the factory twin turbo kit had to fit between the firewall and the drive system. And it was very compact, very interesting engineering feat for the early 90s but it meant that a consideration had to be made in the actual head casting itself. Whereas these ports are directly over the cylinders. So it's a straighter shot out. So there are people that argue that an NA head has better exhaust flow. And I would argue that an NA head has uh, less intake track volume, which may or may not make a big difference because the turbocharger is forcing the air in anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions regarding the 2JZ build or a 2JZ stroker build, feel free to reach out. I'll see you next time.